The Memphis Force have a new home this week, and it's right in the middle of all the action on the world-famous Beale Street. We're at the New Daisy Theater, and for the Memphis Force, a change may be good for them. In a battle of two teams that have downright struggled this year in the World Series of Boxing, the 3-6 and six Miami Gallos take on the 2-7 and seven Memphis Force tonight. I'm Alan Massengelt with Sean O'Grady, and there's your card, Sean. We have uh, three Olympians on there. Raynell Williams, Emery Zello, and Roberto Navarro from the DR, Dominican Republic. And I'll tell you, that's the quality of these fighters, three Olympians on the same card. Now, we're looking at these fighters. Uh, they all know how to fight a little bit. Some can fight a lot, like Raynell Williams on the left there, who is scoring well in uh, one of his earlier fights. Now, he got cut in one of his fights, but he's coming back from that. Here is Emery Zello on the right of your screen. This, this guy is just a mean fighter. He's nasty in the ring, and uh, he scores very well. Roberto Navarro here is uh, one who throws real straight punches. He's a very classy young fighter and a former Olympian. Here is Cam Thompson, who is a heavyweight, kind of an elusive style in the ring. He's kind of a free bird in that ring. Man, when he fights, he's hard to, hard to hit, and he hits the other fella. We'll be starting, as usual, in the Bantamweight division, Luis Miguel Diaz and Ernesto Garza of Memphis. So to get us started, let's send it to Chuck Roberts, our ring announcer. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the new Daisy Theater on historic Bill Street. You're in Memphis, Tennessee for the World Series of Boxing. Our first bout of the evening is a Bantamweight bout representing the Miami Gallos and fighting out of the blue corner. Welcome, uh, Luis Miguel Diaz. Luis Diaz is a southpaw, a slick fighter, but he hasn't won yet. He idolizes Juan Guzman from the DR, two-time world champion. I think he needs to work a little bit on his defense and needs some pop on his punches, Sean. Well, he's not afraid to uh, get in there and brawl, but he takes a beating in doing that. But you know what? Every one of the fights, he's still competitive. He hangs in there tough. If he just doesn't get the wins and the, well, the fights, maybe he's learned enough to how to how to pick up some victories. You got to do it one round at a time. Start off just one, and then, then you get pick up a victory or two. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, fighting out of the red corner, representing your Memphis Force, uh, Ernesto Garza! Ernesto Garza, 22 years old, out of Saginaw, Michigan. He's got 11 years experience. He's a national Golden Gloves champion. And uh, his first match on opening night, Back in November, he had the misfortune of facing Braulio Avila, <laughs> who took care oh, of him. Avila's an gosh. excellent fighter, who's also beaten uh, Luis Diaz in this thing. He's a good banger. I tell you what, I like this kid. He uh, fights hard, he's very aggressive. He call, calls himself a pit bull fighter. Likes to get on the inside and score, and he tries not to stop scoring. And uh, here, we Ladies go and as we look at these two on the head-to-head. -head. And, uh, and there you can, there you can see. Judges Jose Bonet, Ricky Webb, and Tony Germain. You can see that uh, Garza, a little bit older, uh, one year, uh, one inch height advantage. I don't think he will use that. This is going to be a battle in the center of the ring, and they'll settle their scores there. Uh, Diaz still looking for that first win. He's been competitive, but he just hadn't picked up the Duke. Angel Nazari over there, uh, tending up some uh, glove issues, taping them on. Uh, Sean, they use the um, different type of, they don't really tape them that much, do they, here in the No, WSB? they use Velcro on them. Yeah. They're one of the great improvements, especially in boxing, because, you, you know, you, you uh, that tape you come loose, the sweat gets under it, and, uh, you know, it doesn't stop a fight. That's our referee, Larry Faraby, will be giving final instructions here in Memphis. Right on Beale Street tonight. Got five fights. This is the first one, Bantamweight division. Five rounders, three minute rounds. 10 9 must system. You notice no headgear, no shirts. And they love that. Yeah, they have fun uh, with it. These kids love that. They, they're used to fighting with a headgear, so it's a little bit different. Headgear certainly impedes your vision. Protect yourselves at all times. 
Touch glove. Touch glove. Square up. So here we go. Round one scheduled for five. The Bantamweights. They'll knock each other around. It's a small ring in there, Sean. Really? Very small. It looks about, it looks uh, smaller as the night goes yeah, on, too. Sure does. Looks like it's about 17, maybe 16, 17 feet across. We're on Beale Street tonight in Memphis. Miami Gallos visiting the Memphis Force. Round one of the Bantamweights in the blue trunks is Luis Diaz taking on Ernesto Garza. A couple of, of southpaws. Both yes. of them fighting in the left-handed stance. It's also confusing for a southpaw, for a left-handed fighter, to face one that is the same as him, as a left-hander. Most of most boxers are right-handed here the Americas. Well, you'll notice that Garza will come straight forward. Uh, Diaz will try to use his speed. He's a slick little fighter. He's 0-4, but on his record, you got to remember, he's faced the two best, two of the best in the world that we've seen, Braulio Avila and Rushi Warren, the two-time Olympian who fights for L.A. Going to the body right there, Sean. That's something we didn't see early on in this series as Diaz tries to work downstairs to try to take some of the speed away from Mr. Diaz. You know, it's a very important thing to do, and perhaps one of the things that he has learned. He's always told me that uh, holding and hitting there said that, that he was a good body puncher. Uh, his best punch, he says, his favorite weapon is the uppercut. For Garza, you're looking at his face right there. Yeah, he's going to come straight in. He's a banger, like you said. You'll notice the high volume of punches, as always, especially in the bantamweight division throughout the World Series of Boxing. Oh, yeah, and then they're also in this tinier ring, which makes it more exciting for them. Oh, left hand us. got in there on the Diaz right there. Garza was able to land a left hand right there. Oh, good shot to the body. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. Nice weapon. Straight left from uh, Garza. Like I said, Diaz... A very fast fighter gets in and out. Pretty good style. Good yeah, style. He's, he's not in a pop on his punches. He's got a heavy-handed fighter in there. He's going up against. Guards is going to try to walk, walk him down. Yeah. Look at how close Garza is. Every time he steps back, Diaz he tries drops his hands, throws his head up in the air, and tries to take a couple of breaths, but he doesn't get those because Garza is on top of him. Garza is a pressure fighter. He loves. He says that's what he used in the ring. My greatest weapon is the pressure. January 5th at Miami, he won a unanimous decision. Garza did against Paulo Carvalho of Brazil. Pretty good fighter. It was a close fight. All judges had it 48-47. Garza's gotten a lot better as we've gone along. Somebody's going to land a big punch here, and I think it's going to be Garza with that left hand is getting in. Oh, there it was. <laughs> right on cue. Oh, no, not when no, guards, it was Diaz that landed. <laughs> uh, you, had, you pegged it right. Somebody's going to land something. Just uh, sometimes not enough steam behind it on Diaz's punches, but Garza will walk through most of that. A couple of well schooled. There's another left Bantam hand ones. got in. Diaz, another left hand got in. Look at him go here in the final seconds of round number one. A scorching round. That was fun. Boom, you know, toward the end of that round, it seemed like they realized, you know what, we're going to be, be at the bell here momentarily. They scored well right at the end. Still kind of posturing there in the, in the first part of that first round, looking to see what their opponent is going to do. Garza's has got the experience. There's a look at Diaz, who... Uh, well, Angel uh, Nazario works with the Spanish-speaking fighter. Take a look at some of the action, Mr. O'Grady. Yes, and then pressure from Garza is so effective. One of his best attributes. He gets right in the face of his opponent, keeps on uh, punching. You can't rest for one second against somebody like Garza. Diaz would like to step back, take a couple breaths, and be able to box from the outside. But uh, how'd you have that round? Pretty close. You know, I thought uh, Diaz had one good shot in that round. Garza mostly, I think, put the pressure on him. Round number two in the bantamweight division. Luis Diaz in the blue trunks with the red trim taking on Ernesto Garza, the third, in the Memphis Force colors, the purple. Pressure, pressure, pressure from Garza. I think they're going to pick it up a little bit here. Look at Diaz. Nice. You can see why that. Diaz scores well in international competitions. 
with the Olympic scoring system, but when you're in this system, you've got to put some steam behind those punches. He needs a little more power. You're right. A little more power in his pop. I like to see him keep his chin down a little bit more. When he throws his punches, he raises his chin a bit. Mm -hmm. Garza does. Just a, just a tiny amount. Notice Garza, a veteran that he is, was holding the referee was on the other side, holding that right hand and punching with the left. <laughs> you, you learn all these secrets. Yep. You know, it's a either sink or swim. You better learn some, some secrets to pull you through these fights. Good combination from Diaz. Oh, you know, he's right in there where Diaz. he wants to be. That's he's, he's got the he's closing the distance, Sean. Uh, you watch Diaz yeah. will try to get in and out, but he's getting beaten down a little bit. And, and, and Garza cutting off the ring. You're right. Yeah. Look at how he's cutting off. He steps over, cut off the ring. You slide over. You, you take, take a, a square ring. It's 16, 17 foot. Cut it in half. It's 18 foot. And then, uh, I mean, sorry, it's 8 foot. And then you cut that in half, 4 foot. And you're fighting in a little box. That's where he wants to be. In a shoe box. That's what he wants. <laughs> Hand got in there right there, but the pressure's still coming. Diaz right in your face. I mean, excuse me, Garza. Well, this is where the conditioning is, in, is extremely important for somebody like Garza. Look how busy Diaz is in, the, is in this round. That's important for Garza because he is a he is a thoroughbred horse. He'll he'll come on strong in that fourth and fifth round. One minute left coming up in round number two, and he's got Diaz in retreat. And I've noticed the scoring. I had some in Los Angeles the other night. Uh, the scoring the judges tend to go toward the guy who's the aggressor. I haven't seen a lot of guys. The guys that tend to show more movement and stay away don't get rewarded for that. So they Not like to see people come in and put pressure on. Not here in the World Series boxing. There are the rules are a little favor toward the professionals, kind of like the, the professional rules. They have a thing called ring generalship. Yes. And they can utilize that here. They cannot in the. Olympic scoring and the and the regular amateur boxing scoring, but they can in this league. Just how they feel that, that a fighter is able to impose his will on his opponent. Wow, look at this pace of these two. It's unbelievable how many punches they throw. Boy, there's a good right hook. All the people I bring to the fights to always talk about the pace and the action. Five round fights. Final ten seconds coming up in this round. You just gotta like the way the guards have been able to get in there and cut the ring off. And now he did pretty good defense right there. Stepping back. Lead left. Talking about a difference in pace. That second round, Garza kept on the pressure the entire round. In the first, he seemed to be kind of wanting to take a look at what Diaz was going to do. And try to stay back just a little on the outside more. This in that second round, he kept on the the, the pressure and the preponderance of punches. Here is Garso right in front of in front of Diaz. Diaz has to be thinking to himself, how do I get this guy out of off of me? That's not quite possible. No, not with Garza. There's Coach Pat Burns on your right there. We we caught up with Pat to ask him, but we talked about what a grind it's been. The third match of 14 days. This season's been a long, long season, right, Coach? Let's hear from him. Well, it's, um, it, we, we have just been plagued with injuries. Uh, a lot of guys hurt, and um, we're going, it's, it's, a, it's a grueling season. I've got guys uh, that are competing with, with, just need six months away from the, from the sport, but they're tough, and they're, and they're, fighting it, they're fighting it out. A lot of other teams are in the same boat. Um, Memphis is very tough. Um, in those losses, we've lost 11 split decisions. Uh, which could have gone either way, but hey, you just gotta keep battling. I have some guys that are doing really well. I expect them to do, to do uh, go a long way, and, and uh, it's just one of those things. It's it's a, it's a grueling, uh, a really a grueling season. We expect a good fight. We got a good one going right here in the third round to the bantamweights. Uh, Diaz decided to turn it up a notch there, Sean, and uh, he's getting in and scoring well with the body. But you know, guards is going to be right in his face. The guards is in the purple trunks for Memphis, the home team tonight. That's what does it for Garza. It's the pressure that does it. He, he's right. He makes you work. He does not give you one second to rest. Diaz would love that. He'd love to be able to box around and move around, slide around, work on some of his stuff. But there's no time here. Well, styles make fights, and we got definitely a contrasting styles in there. Oh, 
good combination from both of them. Yes, both you know, of them. Diaz had good scores on the inside. Just throws real straight, pretty perfect punches. He caught a nice left. Diaz just landed right there. It's a good round so far for Diaz in the third round. I think it is. Yeah, he might be down two rounds to none coming into this one. But I think he knows he had to step it up. He landed a right hand right there. Garza's trying to catch. It's like trying to catch a butterfly, isn't it? <laughs> well, yeah, good lateral movement from him. You're taught that when your back hits those ropes, look at these combinations. Nice punches. Good stuff. Diaz, you even went downstairs to the body. You're taught that when your back hits those ropes, you slide down the ropes. Don't bounce right off the ropes. Oh, good cross from Garza. Yeah, he got his attention right there. A fast paced round three, one minute left. And this is the way Garza fights every time. This is a, it is a grind in there for him and his opponents. He's having trouble catching Diaz here. Diaz has been able to get inside and score some good combinations. And get out. The movement has been <laughs> real good for uh, Diaz. Yes, it has. It's his best round. He scored, landed more punches and more combinations. He's got to let it go and land those combinations and then get out. It's what he wants to do. Because if he stands in one spot, somebody's going to be on top of him, and that would be Mr. Garza. You know, you talked about uh, many times you see the judges favor the pressure fighter, but I tell you what, if you can fight like Diaz is and move like Diaz is and land uh, and land score and not allow your opponent to score, you're really imposing your will on your opponent. This is very nice work, especially being two rounds down, in my opinion, from Diaz. He comes out and changes his focus in this third. Well, he's come in with some straight shots, like they're doubling up his jab and Excellent. staying out of the way. See, Garza's is really, he's winded a little bit. Wow, very good round. Very impressive for Luis Miguel Diaz. He's coming off coming off those first two rounds, Alan, it would have been easy for him just to fall, but he just changed gears in that third. Very nice round for him. And coming off that round, how do you build upon that? Here is why I'm saying things like that. It was a couple of shots from Garza, but Garza couldn't match that speed. And the fast punches and punches and bunches that uh, Lewis was punching about. And there they are again. Good combination. Then he moves out before some retaliation from Garza. Garza would just love it if Luis Miguel would sit and trade with him and war with him. Round four in the uh, Bantamweight division coming up. It's probably tightened up a little bit. I believe Sean O'Grady has it two to one in favor of the guy in the purple trunks, Ernesto Garza. But I tell you what, the only thing, Diaz has got good movement good skills if he just had a little more pop on those punches. <laughs> Got Garza coming straight in and made Garza pay right there. He you know he's going to be there for you. He just better keep his mouth closed. He's got his tongue sticking out in his mouth. If he gets hit while he's got his tongue out, yikes. He just landed a left right there. Garza's liking this because he's going to trade with him a little bit right there. Ooh, Another good. left hand got in. The right hand. Ooh, both left punch. hand. Both punches landed for both guys. Good shot. Another good shot. Got a home for that left hand is Diaz. Diaz is letting it go, and Garza's going to dig to the body right here. He's getting the type of fight this round that, that, that Garza wants, but I think he's getting outpointed. And outpunched. <laughs> yeah, speed has just been so detrimental to him. This, well, look how well. Couple of rounds. Look how much we've seen Diaz develop, though. He's, a, he's yeah. a much better fighter than the first four fights we saw him. Yeah. But he's on four, and he's had a lot of things now. He has a lot of things to, to work on. He knows it. You know what, what these kids, what, what makes them winners is they spend more time in the gym. They train harder. They listen to their coaches better. They learn more technique. And it looks to me like that's what he's done. Looks, looks at the tapes. Well, he wants to get off those ropes real quick. Oh, yeah. What an exciting Bantamweight fight. Wow. Coach Bradley over here telling this fighter to go left to the body, then go to the head. If he could find the body, it keeps moving. <laughs> Downstairs, almost a low blow right there. Hit him with your left or your right. Larry Farabee been <laughs> watching carefully when Diaz goes downstairs right there. Not much clinching in this batch at nope. all. Garz is trying to land that big left. A couple of good kids, too. Yeah. Garza would love to just hold still, Diaz. <laughs> yeah. let, me, let me have you. 
take a couple of these. Let me give you a leather sandwich here. Good left hand right there from Garza coming in. You know, it's this sort of a Caribbean style we see. This guy's from uh, the Dominican Republic. We see good movement from our fighters. We get out of Puerto Rico, and sure, one exception for a guy that will that doesn't have a, a lot of movement in Puerto Rico, but has great uh, ring skills is Miguel Cotto. Oh yeah, but he won't move as much as this. No, and he's got power. He's got the pop that can turn a fight. Yep. Uh, he's got deafening power that can turn off a, a, an attack from an opponent. Control, 22 seconds left. He can control his adversary. And that's what the judges, one of the things the judges are looking for here in the World Series of Boxing. Tough workout for Garza. You can yeah. tell he's breathing through his mouth a little bit because he's had to chase this guy. It's like, you know, a marathon in there. Now he got him in a position there where he can land some body punches. Right here at the end, he is going to try to pick up some more points. This could be close. Boy, what a close round. How do you score that one? I mean, uh, just, Diaz was moving, he was scoring well, but it was the pressure from Garza that was really getting to him. Huge fourth round, wow. And here's what was happening. That left hand right there was nice. Right on the side of the head. Garza is getting hit, but he's, he's punching back, he's hanging in there, and he's keeping on the pressure. That's something that he wants to do. One of the things he wants to do is force the fight, force the attack. There's Garza. He's such a good fighter. It could come down to this round, Sean. Fifth and final uh, round. Absolutely. This, so, that is how close this match is. What both these uh, corners have been telling their fighters, you got to have this round. Let's see if they have enough left in the tank to step it up. Garza's been frustrated on the right side of your screen right there in the purple trunks because he's it's very tough to fight. Hit this guy. Ooh. Nice one right there. He's digging in now, yeah. Sean. Yeah, this is he's it. Final round. Down. Yeah. Don't leave it, in the, don't leave it in the locker room. Here we go. Put it out there. Look at him. Let their hands right. go. Nice work from both of them. I'll tell you what, Diaz better keep his mouth closed. He's still sticking out his tongue, and that's a dangerous thing to do, especially when you're getting attacked like he is. Bite it right off. It will hurt. A little feints right there. Oh. Nice left hand landed from Garza, who's trying to cut off this ring. Digging to the body. Holding with the left hand. Diaz missing right there. Now Garza's going to get up on his toes a little bit. <laughs> Where do we see this? Where'd this come from? A good counter right there from Diaz. Fast page to action, two minutes left, round number five. I believe it could be the deciding round. You know, is Diaz a little bit faster than Garza? But Garza is keeping on the, the, the pressure. He's making the fight, he's forcing it. Very close match, oh, good. Garza Hook. coming in with a one and one record. From Saginaw, Michigan. Oh, good hook from Garza. Yeah, I'd like to see more of those during the fight. He has just not a pretty nice right hand that Garza walked right through. If he could have gotten to the body earlier in this fight, it might have made a big difference. Look at this. This is fifth round action. <laughs> this Look at this. Non -stop. And they are still non -stop going action away. Here in the the, World these are two fighters that have fought their way into condition. You know, they've learned this, this system here at the World Series of Boxing. We saw them early in the in the season, and they're not the fighters. No. They the fighters then that they are today. That's right. They've learned. They're they've good. hard. It's been a grind, like we said. And they can keep using that word, but three matches in 14 days for these fighters. Are these teams? That's tough. Boom, downstairs to the bottom still, Garza. Garza yeah. might be taking this round because of those body shots. He's still trying to find a way. The mouthpiece coming out from, uh, from Diaz. Keep that mouthpiece in, bite down that mouth. That's a that's a problem here. You know, we, early in the season two, these kids all had their mouth open. Now right. just a few of them have it open. You've been preaching to oh, them I, about it. I don't want to see him get hurt. Good work right there from Diaz. Garza's decided to take what Diaz throws as long as he can get a few in himself. Because he's not getting hurt. I see a window open and we're less than 25 seconds. Right hand. Yeah. The window's open. Garza, you got to score. Keep on the pressure. Got to stay on top of him. Diaz, you know he's coming after you. Work around him. Keep punching. Who's going to punch? He wants to stay away, I think. 
Tell you what, five seconds left. Garza may have done enough. He's getting countered right there. He got caught right there. Pretty what? tough round to score, tough fight what to score. What a match. <laughs> Man. They would have had to wait. Glad I'm not a judge on this one. You know, that first round, I thought it was Garza. The second round, I thought that was pretty much Garza, too. Diaz came back in that third. The fourth, I think, was so close it could have gone either way. And this fifth round was so close, too. But perhaps perhaps Garza e eked out that, that fifth round, too. But Angel's proud what, of his fighter. Great fight, yeah. Great fight. Well, he has developed really well. Terrific yeah. matchup. Take a look at the action from the last round. And here's what was happening. It was uh, Diaz who looking for that final bound, but it's Gar Garza that was uh, scoring well, landed with a lot of hooks. He kept on the pressure. Did he beat down Diaz early in this fight so that Diaz was a little bit tighter in this fifth and final round? Conditioning played a huge role in this fight. And experience played a good role. Both of these fighters have been through this before, and they know. He has that right oh. hand, the nicest punch of the round. Right hook, wow. He's right on the nose. Okay, let's set it up Chuck Roberts with the decision now. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the results in this World Series of Boxing Bantamweight felt are as follows. Uh, Judge Bonnet, 48-47. Judge Webb, 45-50. Judge Germain, 46-49. The winner, Luis Miguel Diaz. Well, there you have it. Diaz scoring enough points. You see an obviously disappointed Garza. One judge had it all five rounds, Diaz. I don't think that's the way I had it. I would have had the 48-47, I agree with, three to two. But that's a big road win right there for Miami coming here against Memphis. Memphis is trying out probably their best lineup of the season. But uh, Miami's jumped out to earn a lead in this fight thanks to this young man. I think his corner and Pat and Angel thought he had it. And he did indeed get the decision. So that's where we stand. We got four fights to go. But uh, the Memphis Force, they got a tough road to climb. They got to win three of the next four to take the decision. So, coming up next, we're going to have the lightweight division coming up. Williams and Gonzalez. There they are at the way in. We're just off Beale Street for the way in. We're in Memphis. Don't go away. More World Series of Boxing coming up. Well, one judge on that first fight, Sean, had it 50 45. I didn't see that, but. Nah. I didn't see that at all. The 48, 46. You never know, though, do you? You don't. You don't. Some judges favor aggressiveness, more favor the, the boxing ability. Uh, there's so many variables that that you have to contend with. Uh, I still like I do like it better than the uh, Olympic scoring because it's, that's just one punch. It doesn't matter. The, the, the effort of the punch or the force of the punch does not matter. 